In the previous lectures, we have discussed central tendency measures or location estimates, such as mean and median. In this lecture, we will discuss very important terms in statistics, which are sample and population. We will discuss what we mean by the term sample data and the term population data in statistical analysis. In statistics, population data contains all possible observations from a targeted group. For example, if your targeting group is elementary schools in a specific state, then your population would be all elementary schools in that state. As you see, it depends on your target. Your target defines your population. Now the sample is a subset of observations from a targeted group. From the definition, we know that the sample is always smaller than the population. Let's say that in your targeted state, there are 500 elementary schools. If you take observations for a certain parameter from the 500 schools, then you have population data. Usually, because of time and resource limitations, you would opt to choose a subset of randomly selected schools. Let's say 30 schools. The data from these 30 schools would be the sample data. Now let's have some examples in Python to illustrate the idea of population and sample data. As usual, let's first import the NumPy library like this. Because we are going to create some graphs in this lecture, we will need also to import the Matplot library. Don't worry about creating figures right now. You will learn how to create figures in detail in module 5 later in this course. Now we will import the Matplot library like this. Now we will use an NumPy function, which is np.random.randn, to create a hypothetical population of 500 observations, like this. As you see, we created a variable called population that contains 500 random numbers. This NumPy function, np.random.randn, is used here to create random numbers from a standard normal distribution. You will learn more about normal distribution and other types of distribution in module 8 of this course. Notice also the first line of code here. I use this numby function nb.random.seed frequently in this course. The seed function allows us to generate the same random numbers every time we run this code. I do this so that when you replicate codes in this code, you will get the same results as mine. The number that is passed to this function, here I used 33, is just an arbitrary number. Changing this number will produce new random numbers. Okay, let's now display the first 10 elements of the population data like this. Now, just looking at the data point will not help us understand our data. So let's now visualize our population data using a histogram to understand the shape of our data. We can create a histogram for the population data like this. In module 5 of this course, you will learn how to create and read histograms. Right now, don't worry about the code, just look at the created histogram. From the histogram, we know that most data are around zero. Let's confirm this by calculating the mean, like this. As you see, indeed, the mean is around zero. Let's now calculate the median, like this. As you see, the median is very close to the mean, which is also around zero. And this is because the data is normally distributed without extreme values. Now, let's create a random sample from this population. To do so, we will select a subset of the population, then we will explore the properties of this sample and how it relates to the population. To select a sample from a data, we use an NumPy function called np.random.choice, and we pass the data and the size of the sample to this function like this. 
Here we passed two arguments to this function. The first one is the data, which is the population data that we want to take a sample from. The second argument is the size of the sample, which is the number of observations in our sample. As you see, we selected only 30 observations from the population data. This is what we normally do in real life. Usually, we just take a random sample because it's not feasible to take observations from the whole population. But the question that may arise now is this. Is it sufficient to take just 30 observations from the population? I mean, would this give us an accurate measure of the population? Let's find out by calculating the mean of this sample and see how it is related to the population mean. And we do it like this. As you see, the sample mean is very close to the population mean. This tells us a very important concept in statistics, which is that we don't need to take observations from the whole population. A small random sample from the population would be sufficient to estimate the population parameters. With this, we come to the end of this lecture. In the next lecture, we will have more examples to see how the concepts in this section are applied to data science. Thanks for watching and see you there.